have Wendy Rogers. Thank you. You left a good major standing. <laughs> good luck. Hey, I have a flag jacket on, buddy. <laughs> Am I on? You're on. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Wendy Rogers, W E N D Y R O G E R S. No D in Rogers for Democrat. Are we all awake? Okay. I'm uh, running for Congressional District 9, which uh, Travis Grantham has spoken to you from, and Martin Sepulveda. I'm uh, setting up a map here. I actually live in the district. Um, I own a business in the district. I'm the only one running Democrat or Republican who meets a payroll in the district for 14 employees. I own uh, house master home inspections. My husband, Hal Cunnan. Hal kept his maiden name when we got married. Uh, uh, you are still awake. I'm so glad. Uh, Hal and I are retired Air Force officers. I'm a retired lieutenant colonel from the Air Force. I went to pilot training just down the street here at Williams Air Force Base, now Mesa Gateway. 20 years of service, retired 15 years ago opened up our business out of the living room, and now it has 14 employees. When you fast forward 20 minutes from now and ask me if I have the chutzpah to follow through on ideology, let me just tell you real quickly a few illustrations. I was one of 18 people in 1976 when I was commissioned in Air Force ROTC from Michigan State University from a campus of 50,000 students. I was one of the first hundred women pilots to go through pilot training. So, needless to say, I'm no shrinking violet, okay? <laughs> I'm a mother. Hal and I have raised, we've been married 34 years. Uh, I just turned 58 yesterday, okay. and thank you. And uh, went to Texas Roadhouse right down the street here. <laughs> and, uh, we have two children who are very successful, uh, earned scholarships through ASU, and we have a grandchild. Uh, I'm a fifth generation military officer. Our son is a sixth generation military officer. I promised my father on February 6th, when he was dying in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, that I would run for Congress and that I would fight to get the country back that he and I fought for. And I'm going to keep that promise. I promised my husband when I married him 34 years ago. I promised my country when I took the oath of office. I promised our kids when we raised them right. And I've promised our employees, none of whom, I say again, none of whom have we ever laid off. I own an office building on Rural Road, Hal and I do, that's got eight tenants, and I've got to make it work. I don't get a bailout. I don't get a stimulus. I can't print money. And I had to let the cleaning crew go in January, and now we sweep the carpets, and we clean the toilets. And I think it's high time government started sweeping the carpets and cleaning the toilets. And I think, as a small business owner who has to sharpen her pencil every two weeks to meet a payroll, you need to send someone like that, like me, to Washington. So, this is the district. It starts up here at Sunny Slope, I-17. I have canvassed in here. I've ridden my bike to 10, 11,000 homes over the past two years to meet the voters knocking on doors. <coughs> that was predominantly in this part of the district. I liken this to a backwards letter C. So you have the Arcadia Biltmore portion of the upper part of the C, you got South Scottsdale. You got the vertical part of the sea, which is Tempe. On the shoulder of the sea, you have a third of Mesa, including the Mormon Temple. 
On the rump of the C, you have a little bit of Chandler, down where my son and daughter-in-law live. And then on the leg of the C, you have all of Ahwatukee. I get asked all the time, Wendy, are you disappointed in how this district was drawn by the Independent Redistricting Commission? <laughs> my answer is, it is what it is. And my fondest dream in life will be to run against Kirsten Cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Because there is no sharper distinction or contrast between two women than between Kirsten Cinema and Wendy Rogers. And the only two things we have in common are that we're both women. <laughs> and we both have master's degrees in social work. I'm the only Republican social worker you will ever meet in your life. <laughs> so let's rifle through these questions, shall we? And I, and I realize uh, this is a tough crowd. I was briefed on that out in the hall. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some answers you won't like, okay? But I'm just warning you, this is who I am. I'm unequivocal in my resolve and needless to say in my follow through. So here we go. What's the purpose of government? To protect the individual rights of citizens. What is an inalienable right, not unalienable? <coughs> inalienable rights come from God, absolute rights, natural rights that government can't take away from the people. Life, individual liberty, and private property are considered among these gifts. Is the Constitution relevant? Absolutely more now than before. Should the Second Amendment be modified? No. Is Social Security constitutional? No. Should it be phased out? I'd like to see it phased out. If it can't be phased out, I'd like to see private options. I know how to invest my money. If I want to have the government do it, okay. But I shouldn't be forced to have the government <coughs> invested. Because they don't do a very good job. Do you, uh, yes, I favor auditing the Federal Reserve System. Do I favor dismantling it? Let's audit it first, and then take a close look. I'm not one of these people who says, let's throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? I'm a diligent student of procedure, and I want to do it right, and not just make some blanket statement to pander tonight, because I won't do that. How do you feel about the United Nations? I was deployed in 1994 to run the Bosnian airlift away from my family, my children, and my husband. I worked with the UNHCR, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. The UN does a good job at refugee relief, but that's it. I do not want to wear a blue beret, okay, and be under the UN militarily. The UN also, and a lot of people don't know this, as, as, a Air For as an Air Force pilot, who flew internationally thousands of hours, many, many years, I flew under the rules of the ICAO, I-C-A-O, International Civil Aviation Authority. Keeps us off from bumping into each other out there over the ocean. That is an offshoot of the UN. So those kinds of things are good, but not combat. Okay? That's where I stand. Are there any UN treaties you agree with? Uh, no. Um, what is your opinion uh, of the income tax? Well, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to read a little bit here so I get it right because I know Will's got me on camera there. The, uh, with the passing of the 16th Amendment to the Constitution, we were given, Congress was given the authority to tax. I don't think that that was intended by our founders. That should never have happened. I think most conservatives are in support of a drastic tax reform that empowers individuals and allows wealth creators, job creators, to keep more of what they earn. Number 10, would you support a complete private medical option plan in, contra in contrast to Obamacare? Affirmative. That means yes. <laughs> Under what conditions would you vote to raise the debt ceiling? I don't think we should raise the debt ceiling. As a congresswoman, 
insert woman there. <laughs> Where in the Constitution do you get your authority from? Article 1, Section 8. Five most important powers. Declare war, raise an army, raise a navy, spend, tax, borrow. Those are the things that are most important. Those are the things that get us in trouble the most. Declare war. Regulate commerce. Constitute tribunals. Would you require, uh, number 13, moving right along. Would you require that Congress declare war before committing U.S. military intervention? <coughs> Affirmative. Do you approve of the undeclared wars we have been in for many years? They are constitutional. Fourteen, what is your opinion on military conscription? That means the draft. I think women ought to be able to be drafted. Oh my gosh, you know. That's probably something you didn't think you'd hear tonight. If men have to sign up for the selective service, I think women should too. Where are the lines of combat drawn? They're very blurry now. Military police used to be non-combat. Now cooks are in combat. You can't draw those lines. So what you're really asking me is, yeah, but should we have a draft overall? I'm going to give you two answers to that. Being in the military, I know from having worked at a headquarters level that the generals don't want the draft because by the time a guy or a gal gets trained in two years, then he or she is gone. And so it's not cost effective. So from a cost effective standpoint, the higher ups really would rather not have the draft. However, let's talk about loyalty to country. We have a lot of men who served because they were drafted that have a loyalty to country and a heartfelt connection as patriots that they would never have had if they had not been drafted. And I think there are precious few people now in Congress who have served. And I got a problem with that. When I first began my run, I looked across Congress to see who had served in the military when I had, i.e. who I would have a bond with for my 20-year career, even sort of overlapping someone else's tenure in the military. You know how few people I found? No women, of course. 60 men. 60 Republicans. There were a few Democrats. So, what does that tell you? And people ask me, well, what are you, how are you going to get things done, Wendy, when you go to Congress? And I tell the audiences, I'm going to reach out and find those congressmen who served when I did, because there's a transcendent bond among us from having served. But it's really a sad state of affairs when only 60 have served, roughly. So, I'm going to give you kind of a... Final answer on conscription, I think statistically, numerically, maybe you don't get a cost-benefit relationship out of it, but for the future of our country and the loyalty and the patriotism that it engenders in people who serve, I think there's an intangible asset there. So I'm going to give you the political answer and say I see both sides to that. <laughs> Ah, number 15, no, absolutely not. 16, do you support federal subsidies? No. 17, do you oppose or favor developing our natural resources? So, yes, yes, and yes. 18, would you have signed the reauthorization of the Patriot Act? You, you need to go now? <laughs> The Patriot Act, I would have signed. It protected us. I think when it gets into uh, the wrong hands, though, it can be a problem. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> National ID cards. I, I already have a military ID card. I already have a passport. And I already have a driver's license. 19. What should be done about illegal immigration? This is what keeps me up at night. This is what keeps Colonel Rogers up at night. 
Why? Because no one likes to say this, and even my my loving opponents, and, and three of us, four, four of us are quite actually pretty buddy-buddy because we all served in the military. Sepulveda, Grantham, Leah, and I, uh, well, she was in the CIA, but, but I can't tell you that. <laughs> but uh, uh, what keeps Colonel Rogers up at night is the notion that a nuclear weapon could walk across our border. And the other thing that keeps Colonel Rogers up at night is the alliance with drug cartels that the Islamic jihadists have. And when I was in my Arizona Republic uh, Spanish Inquisition uh, editorial roundtable a week and a half ago, I read them an LA Times article. They almost threw me out, but I read it to them. <laughs> and, I, and it was a clear example of an ex-CIA agent who was uh, undercover still. I mean, he can't reveal who he is ever. Uh, revealing tons of information about this. It's, they're here. They're among us. Talk about the CIA. <laughs> as far as illegal immigration is concerned, we need to enforce the law. Uh, do you support a 20? Do you support the restoration of precious metals based currency in the U.S.? Yes. What is your opinion on genetically modified foods? Well, I stopped having kids for a lifetime, so I hope it doesn't affect me that way. But uh, all that aside, I grow my own vegetables in the backyard of our office building on Rural. Drop on by the jalapenos. Aren't they, Marty? They're yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I, gr I have a community vegetable garden in back of 3030 South Rural. Why? Because it engenders community because I can grow what I want. And my husband goes and picks from it every morning and cooks scrambled eggs with it, and that's what I wake up to. And that's what I like to get back to. I don't need anybody modifying my jalapenos. <laughs> uh, 22, do people have the right to grow food? Absolutely. I, you know, I wasn't supposed to get lengthy on any of these answers, but I used to sell Kool-Aid on the golf course. And I should, you can't even do that anymore, you know? It was the Fort Knox golf course, and I was the entrepreneur at 11 years old on the 15th tee at Fort Knox, and I sold nickel a glass Kool-Aid. I was really rich when I made three bucks, too. <laughs> 23, do you believe that the United States military should intervene in a foreign humanitarian crisis? You're not going to like my answer. I'm a believer in the Powell Doctrine, which says you only intervene when it's in your strategic national interest. If it's in our strategic national interest, then I think it's prudent to go into a country. 24. Should there be any federal regulations over what is taught in public schools? No. I homeschooled my kids. Let me back up. We came back from overseas after being eight years overseas. Our kids were six and nine with little German accents. Both are still <laughs> native speakers to this day. We homeschooled them in here, right here in Mesa, in our living room. And then after sixth grade, they went to a charter school, another educational choice alternative. Tempe Prep Academy, one of the first truly sterling charter schools where you sign where the, hang in there with me, he's falling asleep. <laughs> but it won't be long now. Uh, the parents signed an indoctrination form saying they weren't going to harass the teacher, that the kids were going to wear uniforms, and the kids were going to learn and do three hours of homework a night. And our kids went through that program, and other kids bailed out, and they'd see my kids, and my kids say, well, I have no choice. I'm, my mom and dad said I'm going here. 
Okay? What does that mean? That means the parents are in control. Okay? But whose ultimate responsibility is it to educate one's children? The parents. Not the government. Not the county. Not the city. The parents. And I took that very seriously. Would you like to see the state legislature decide who the U.S. Senator should be? No. What is your opinion on nullification? Nullification should be supported. That's the Tenth Amendment, is to push back against unconstitutional federal laws and regulations on the state. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. I'm Sleepyhead. I'm Go awake on. now. I'm awake. Good. Uh, same question I asked the last candidate. If you... What is your favorite program in the federal government or department, and how many, how much would you cut that department by exact billion? It's it's not my favorite. It's my least favorite, and that's Medicare. Well, I want to know your favorite. I want to know what you're willing to cut that you okay, want. Okay, well that doesn't mean it's my favorite. Then it means my, it's, okay. no. I want to know your favorite to start with. So what's your favorite department? Medicare. Military. You love it. You no, gotta love the military. What's your favorite department? Your favorite department. Period. Period. What, what, I, I'm not going to cut the Department of Defense. Okay, if that's so what you're asking. You will not cut. Crisis, don't you? I will not cut the Department of Defense at okay. this moment. That's a fair Yes. Answer. Where do you see the direction of the Republican Party going after Republicans have expanded um, Department of Education, Government, Health Care, Paul Ryan most raised the debt limit in a time when we're running against what most people call the most socialist president ever, and yet the Republican Party's only answer is to run the most liberal Republican ever conceived. Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that other than to say he, he will be the nominee from every indication and we that's what we have to deal with. Ma'am, that wasn't the question. Where do you see the direction of oh, the uh, right. party going after uh, all these trespasses against what it means to be conservative? I... I think time will tell. I, are you asking me if I approve of Romney having been nominated? No, no, no I'm more saying that this is the Republican, is the Republican Party... Is it viable going forward is what you're asking no, no, me? No, no, is the Republican Party living up to the conservative ideals that we all have uh, come here to defend? Uh, I think you probably think not. Well, and the Department of Education has been increased, mandatory government health care. Agreed. Paul Ryan raises a debt limit. I mean, where do I stop? <laughs> Agreed. Uh, there there are excesses. Uh, I think if you back up and look at, at say, for example, George W. Bush, uh, he traded largesse for uh, being able to uh, execute the surge in Iraq. So there was a, a trade off. And you could say, looking back that many years, uh, was that valid? You know, it was it was a judgment call. Uh, I just read his book a couple of uh, months ago. It's a judgment call. What what is largesse to some is necessary to others. In the long view of things, I agree with you that the Republicans have not cinched up their belts and cut spending as much as I would have liked them to cut. I agree. And so, in the, your your final. Question is, where is the direction of the party? Time will tell. I, I too, am disappointed that uh, in some ways they haven't been uh, as the candidates haven't been conservative enough. Um, what worries me more is the president. You have somebody who is so left of center, and I will conclude with one anecdote. I shook his hand, the president. At Christmas time, I vacationed in, Hal and I and, and our daughter and friends vacationed in Hawaii. And we went to the chow hall at Marine Corps Air Station, Kaneohe. And I believe that he used us. Now, you, you, can, you can chuckle, you can chuckle, but he was there for an hour and a half on Christmas Day. He called my husband, Sir, what is the commander in chief? Calling, with all due respect, dear, my husband, sir. It made him blush. This is not, I don't want a commander-in-chief who's my buddy on the basketball court. I want a commander-in-chief who, if he calls me up and says, 
put on your uniform, Rogers, you're going into combat tomorrow. I want it to be somebody who gets it, who doesn't apologize to our adversaries and doesn't irritate our friends. Okay, I've got to go to the next question. Or who's, who's moderating? Colonel, yeah, Colonel Rogers, we are actually past your time. Oh, my gosh. So if you want to take one or two more questions, I'll leave that up to you. But uh, we need to end. You earlier said uh, if it's in our uh, war, if it's in our natural, natural, national, strategic in, in national interest. interest. Now that you have hindsight on Vietnam, was it? It's a good question. How I. You uh, that? However, you define that those terms, would you push the button to do Vietnam again, or was that stupid? I don't. I don't want to call any uh, war where almost uh, 60,000 uh, souls were lost as stupid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's respectful, frankly, mm -hmm. to the families who lost their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And I, I take umbrage at that. Mm -hmm. um, there were, there were uh, situations where the uh, political establishment were calling all the shots. I think that's wrong. I think there were uh, situations where the generals didn't tell the president how things were going. You got a lot of ticket puncher generals. Are, are you a military guy? What was in our are you a military national guy? In interest? What was in our uh, at that national? time? Yes. To contain communism. So that worked then. It just because it doesn't work didn't mean the no, ideals no. were not valid. So you really haven't so rethought it. If, if you perceive a threat... It's not the answer to your question. It's a debate. It's a debate. It's a debate. It's a debate. Yeah, we're getting into a debate here. We don't need to do that. We just ask the question and answer. We're reading. It's time for us to close this down. I have some questions out here. I think we've seen some great candidates tonight. <laughs> I was actually deployed uh, during the invasion of Iraq. Um, considering that, me and my wife have both come back and both come back with health problems. And one of the things we've been seeing with the Gulf War and also with the Iraq veterans coming home, they're sort of noticing that depleted uranium is a, seem to be the, the key factor. And you know, in the Air Force, A-10s, Apaches, all these use depleted uranium in the, uh, in the armor whether it's the, the Bradleys or the Tankers, all have depleted uranium. Now, considering that, we're seeing more birth defects, especially in these ranges on posts here in the United States, where depleted uranium rounds are being practiced on. We're seeing families with birth defects. We're seeing birth defects in Iraq. We're seeing birth defects in Afghanistan. Do you have a question? How would you consider, and without all else in consideration, would you consider supporting the continuation of the, the depleted uranium in our U.S. weapons arsenal? I, I, I'm not up on that. Uh, I would study it. I would see what the Veterans Administration findings... It's documented in there. Okay. I absolutely should be studied. Anything that shows a hint of hurting a fellow veteran, I'm, I'm going to be all over. Voter radar, yes or no? Negative. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Now we have one more gentleman who's coming tonight. With, uh, Mr. Rowe is a candidate for uh, city council in Chandler, uh, and he, he's going to take about three minutes and tell you who he is. Is that okay? Maybe less. Maybe less.